I'm Courtney Mayorino, and I'm born and raised here in Maine, Portland. Um, I have Crohn's disease, and I was officially diagnosed in 2012. When I first got diagnosed, I didn't really change anything. I was dropped into the world of wellness back in college. I was trying to go into a nursing program here at a local college and wasn't making the grades I needed to get in. And so I transferred into a major involving wellness because it was the one that would take most of my credits so I could graduate on time. And so the universe kind of did me a solid on that one without me even knowing. Um, I studied wellness, nutrition, lifestyle management. I also have a minor in holistic health and integrated medicine and am master Reiki certified. Learning all of that constantly, I kind of got a spark at some point in my college career while I was studying that I could use it on myself and see that if this works for healthy people, why couldn't it work for me? Um, so I just started changing things. I didn't change everything at once. I did one thing and then solidified it and made it work and then moved on. Um, first was my eating style. I switched that a million times until I found what worked. I went gluten-free and then dairy-free and then <laughs> cut out all kinds of other things. And now I've found that a plant-based diet, also being gluten-free as well, works for me. Um, it allows me to not only eat what I enjoy, what makes me feel good, but get really great results in terms of my lab work. And then after I did the food stuff and switched all of that, I kind of dove a little bit deeper. I did a lot of perspective shifting for me. Um, I was a very angry <laughs> patient early on. I was mad at myself, mad at the world. I was not a fun person to be around. Um, and I think the anger and the resentment is very common in the chronic illness community. And why wouldn't it be? I mean, our lives are changing without us even like having any awareness of how it's going to change and how much it's gonna affect our lives. Um, but a mentor of mine, her name is Jessica Flanagan. She wrote The Loving Diet. It talks about not only an eating style, but the perspective shift that needs to occur with people who live with chronic illness and learning from your disease and loving what it's teaching you and all these things. And so, um, Really shifting my mindset was the next step that I took in living well with Crohn's. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that's helped me the most. Food obviously has helped me decrease inflammation, but coming from a perspective of love and being a student of life with Crohn's has really changed my life. And I feel like that's one of the most important things that people can kind of try and change first. Um, if your mindset's not right, if you don't feel like you're deserving of healing and health and an amazing life full of energy and the ability to go out and eat and have fun with friends, then any small tweak that you try and make to your food or to your stress management or your exercise routine, they're not gonna stick. I started with things that were easier for me to change and easier for me to understand. And as I kind of travel along this journey, I'm being called to learn deeper lessons and implement deeper change. And so right now I'm learning a lot about energy work and how stored emotions and limiting beliefs and energy in our bodies, how that affects illness and how that affects how it manifests. Um, and kind of figuring out how that relates to the autoimmune disease community. And so I can bring that perspective back to them and hopefully help them not only understand the concept and the, the idea behind it, but also implement it into their own lives because it's something that people aren't talking about. I had symptoms from 2009 to 2012. Um, usually autoimmune disease patients, as everyone who's watching this knows, you go without a diagnosis for a while, unfortunately. It's a pretty common occurrence. Um, I saw a lot of regular GI doctors. I was put on a lot of steroids, a lot of immunosuppressant drugs, and I thought that this was gonna help because that's what we're told. And doing just the Western medicine route didn't help me. I don't know where this came from, but deep down in my like being, I don't even really know how else to describe it, I've always had a nudge to not really take medication. I mean, when I had a headache when I was younger, I would refuse Tylenol. When I had cramps, I would refuse my, like my doll. Like all these normal drugs that we take for everyday ailments, I don't, I didn't take. 
when I was told that I had to be on a cocktail of steroids and immunosuppressants for the rest of my life, it obviously didn't sit well. Um, but I was so scared and so frightened and so like lost that I was like, okay, like this is gonna help me, fine, I'm gonna do it. I didn't have as much of a solid stance as I do now in terms of how to help myself heal. I had no idea. So I did what I thought was best at the time. I think my lowest point had to have been, I was in college up at the University of Maine at Orono, and I have had plenty of times where I would be across campus and I would need to use the bathroom and I wouldn't make it. And for someone in general, that is mortifying, but for a female in college, I like, I couldn't even handle myself. I was like, I don't even know what's going on and I don't know how to help myself. And so it was just constant, like not wanting to eat, not wanting to put anything in my body because I was so scared that whatever was going on with me would be exacerbated by food. Prior to me getting, uh, getting symptomatic and then officially diagnosed, I had no knowledge that autoimmune was even in my family. I was healthy. My parents were like normally healthy. Um, I've had obviously like I've had surgeries in the past, but nothing chronic to deal with. And we had no thought that it would be something chronic. We thought it would be like, oh, it's IBS or, oh, it's like something you ate or, oh, it's like stress. It's not something that's this serious. So we blew it off for a long time thinking that it wasn't. After that first year of college, I did come back closer to home. Um, there's a local school, probably was like 20 minutes from my house. Um, so I stayed at home. When it got to a point that I literally couldn't eat anything without running to the bathroom at half an hour later, we knew something was wrong. After we kind of got all the testing done and got an official diagnosis of Crohn's, I was given, not an option, but I was given a cocktail of steroids and immunosuppressant drugs. And at the time, I thought that that was my only option. I took them and thought that that was gonna be the magic pill that was gonna make me feel better. At that point in time, I didn't care about my body. I didn't care. I thought I was taking care of myself. We all do when we ha kind of go through stuff like that. We assume that this is the best we can do. When I was diagnosed officially, I kind of remember that day to this day. I remember what my GI looked like. I remember my mom. I remember me kind of grackily waking up from the scope. But I remember him saying to my mom that I had Crohn's. And I didn't know what that meant, but I started crying because I was like, I. I don't know what this is, but it sounds really serious. The steroids, I gained a lot of weight. Um, an unfortunate side effect of steroids. I felt very self-conscious, obviously, because of the weight gain. Um, I, I felt, symptom, like symptom-wise, I think I felt a tiny bit better. But again, I had some like inner knowing that even though I felt better, this wasn't as good as I could feel. I felt self-conscious and sick and unhappy with my life. The first thing I switched kind of was food. Um, I grew up in an Italian family, my dad's Italian, and we had no shortage of pasta bread, meatballs, all of the great Italian food that people know. Um, I loved it growing up, but as I got more aware of both my disease and how to potentially manage it, I was more aware of how food kind of affected me, made me feel. And I would th think to myself, either while I was eating or after I ate, like, wait, either this, I feel really great right now, or I don't. And so after a few more, like, weeks of being aware of this, I cut out gluten. Gluten was my first kind of thing that I chose to omit from my eating style. Um, I had a lot of brain fog once I made the connection and kind of realized that, oh, I, I can't focus or oh I can't remember things and I feel like I'm very like spacey today and it was a constant kind of fog that was over me um, so gluten was my first thing that I kind of decided to no longer consume carbs are my favorite and it, it was hard because for people not only Italians but I think people in general we gather around food and once you decide to eat differently <laughs> 
that automatically makes you different and that's really hard. After I decided to give up gluten, I decided to give up dairy too. The final tweak that I made was no animal products at all. I made a really steadfast personal decision to do what I had to do for myself. And so that meant buying my own food sometimes and cooking my own meals when everyone else at the table was eating the same thing, which automatically makes you feel self-conscious. In the back of my mind, I always had a dream and a goal to be medication free. I had gained, I think it was like 20 pounds in six weeks or something crazy. And I'm only 5'2", so I didn't have a lot of other places to put it besides being really evident on my frame. Um, and I was like, I'm done. Like, if this is gonna make me feel insane mentally, because they can, and make me look so unlike myself, I don't wanna do it anymore. And so I made the decision at that point to not take it. I was still taking another oral med. It was immunosuppressant drug, um, but the steroid, I knew the side effects of it and I didn't wanna have any of it anymore. Um, so I took myself off my first steroid I don't recommend it. It wasn't a good idea. It was my first flare after being officially diagnosed. Um, flares happen, can be randomly, can be triggered, can inc both increase both intensity and frequency of symptoms, can also have extra intestinal manifestation of symptoms, mouth sores, joint pain, swelling, um, randomly. Definitely connected, but doesn't seem like it's connected symptoms. Um, for me, it was just frequency and urgency and um, just really feeling really like inflamed and gross. And my mom was seeing a holistic nurse practitioner at the time. So I was studying, but then my mom was like, you should see her. Like she helped me through some female stuff that was unrelated to autoimmune stuff. So I saw her and she helped me. We took supplements, tons of them that I don't even remember what I was taking. Um, we really worked on healing my gut. I was still taking one drug at the time, but I was also working with her. She definitely not only like saved my life, but kind of changed the trajectory of my treatment. I don't think I'd be this well off if I hadn't worked with her. So I had been taking Entacort, which is a steroid, which is the one I weaned myself off of, and um, 6MP, which is an immunosuppressant. I had took those two when I first got diagnosed in 2012. I had taken the immunosuppressant all the way up until this past October. I was on the drug a long time. Um, but there was also a period of time where when I was just on the 6MP that it wasn't enough. And so I was like, oh, this is great. I'm doing wellness stuff. I feel great. And I went to my GI for a checkup or blood work or something and my markers were high. So my inflammation markers were, and I, he was like, okay, like we're gonna do a colonoscopy and see. And the pictures were not good. Um, they were ulcerated, they were swollen, they were inflamed, it was really bad. He said, you have two choices. He said, you can do an infusion medication, similar to chemo, every eight weeks or you can have surgery. And I was like, crap. Because like, I was like, oh, this is great. Like I'm doing wellness stuff. Like this is gonna help me. I'm gonna be great. And I get this kind of bump in the road and I'm like, oh man, I don't, okay. So I took Remicade for two years. Remicade is a biologic infusion medication, similar to like a chemo drug. Um, Patients go into an office and get an IV of medication and it goes directly into their bloodstream instead of taking it orally or in like self-injection or anything like that. Um, it's supposed to be more effective in that form and stronger and things like that. And I was going every eight weeks for two years. So I was taking the Remicade and the immunosuppressant at the same time. And at that point, I was plant-based, but I had a lot of mental anger still. And so I worked on that. I was doing um, tapping, a little bit of yoga, um, a lot of like deep breathing exercises, really trying to kind of decrease the anxiety and the anger that I felt of having Crohn's still. The resentment and the anger is not something that goes away quickly. You really have to work at it. And you really have to make a conscious awareness almost every second to switch your mindset and be like, okay, like, 
yes, this is the hand I'm dealt, but one, what am I learning from it? And two, like, what's it bringing into my life that I'm not being consciously aware of right now? Um, so while I was on those two drugs at the same time, I was working on my mindset, my perspective, really trying to help shift that because that was hard for me. I think that was one of the hardest things that I've done so far to help myself. But every time somebody asks me what to do, that's what I tell them to do first. Um, and I was on Remicade and the immunosuppressant for two years. And then my plant-based lifestyle really kind of solidified because I was still kind of being plant-based, but I wasn't as kind of solid in that lifestyle as I should have been to feel good. Um, and so once I made the commitment 100% to be plant-based and not, not kind of go back and forth and kind of eat for comfort and not for kind of health, it, it made a difference. In 2016, I had a colonoscopy and I was fully plant-based for a, for a while at that point and the colonoscopy came back completely clean. And so I was on the immunosuppressant, the biologic drug, and I was plant-based and doing all these other things. And I sat down with my GI doctor, and he knows we've had this conversation many times, and I was like, I want to be med-free. I was like, I don't want to do Remicade anymore. Because when I was told that I was going to be on this drug, he's like, you're going to be here for the rest of your life. He told me that, my nurse told me that, and I was like, you won't see me. I'll be here until I ha don't have to be here anymore. I'm not doing this forever. She didn't think the diet had anything to do with it. She didn't think that anything that I was doing was beneficial or worked or she thought I was silly. But I was the only one in that infusion room had a who had absolutely no symptoms on the drug. Everyone else still had other symptoms that they were having and experiencing with the intensity of that drug. And so after being on Remicade for two years, I wrote a long letter to both my GI doctor and my infusion nurse. And I told them, I was like, I understand where you're coming from. I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate your knowledge and all that you've helped me do so far. But I don't want to do this anymore. So I wrote out the diet that I eat, the stress management tools that I use, the perspective that I have. And the fact that I, I can ultimately make my own decision. And that was really hard for me. Standing really, really tall and really solid up, up in front of a physician who is very knowledgeable. And he does care and wants what's best to go in a different direction than what he was recommending. And also to have my friends and loved ones and family be very nervous about the decision that I was about to make. Um, I still did it. And I've been off that for a year and a couple months now. Um, and I was still on the immunosuppressant drug this whole time. But recently I was having weird symptoms. I was not hungry, which does not like me. I love food. I love to eat. Um, I had lower back pain. I was very distended and bloated, which made me nervous because it could be a symptom of a flare-up for Crohn's. It's a pretty common symptom for people with Crohn's disease. Um, but it was very weird. I was like, it's nothing that I had ever felt before. And I hadn't had an appetite for like three weeks. And I was like, this is weird. So I called my doctor, my GI doctor, and I was like, look, this is what's going on. This is how I feel. And I know it's not right. And so I got blood work done every two weeks for a month or a month and a half, and my liver levels were increased. And so they thought I had something else kind of additionally wrong with me. That was my liver, and it wasn't attributed to anything Crohn's related. And we did all these kinds of testing and blood work and imaging, and there was no cyst. There was no nothing else wrong with my liver. And the last ditch effort was to do blood work to see if the medication was causing issues with my liver. And so the immunosuppressant that I had been on from 2012 until 2018, yeah, um, gave me a drug-induced liver injury. And they wanted me to try a different medication. It was the last medication that I was on. I had been on meds 
since 2012 and I was finally this close to the goal that I've had since then about being med free and they were like, we want to try you on something else. And I was like, no. And again, to sit there in front of people who are well-intentioned and who are well-educated and knowledgeable and they only want what's best to tell them no, it's really hard. And people, they message me all the time and they, when they see me in person, they're like, I can't believe you're on no meds. And I was like, this is a battle for me every single day that I have in my head. Am I doing the right thing? And so when I told them that I wasn't going on any more meds and that I was gonna trust my gut on this one, I mean, I got into my car after my appointment and I started crying. It was huge, it's huge. And it's, it's scary every single day to not have a backup. But it's also like I couldn't go and come out of that appointment knowing that I had a chance to try it and not try. And so, so far we're good, I feel great. I'm on no meds. As long as I think I continue on this path of both maintenance and what I'm currently doing and continued exploration and other avenues of things that could potentially be healing for me, I think it's gonna stay that way.